What else do we have on there on the agenda? Uh oh. Chelsea's transfer activity has still been garbage. It's so me, man, you're doublish, half hope. Trying to, trying to exist. I'm coming at you here from Lagos, Nigeria, from the fatherland. Um, malt, rice stew, and beans. Guys, let's let's make it happen. Um, so Chelsea have signed um, Antonio Rudiger for 29 million. Um, sorry, this doesn't mean that Chelsea's transfer um, summer has been complete and absolute an abomination completely crap um but this is a good signing it's not a great signing you know something that excites me or excites anybody but it's a signing it's solid it's good i've watched rudiger play because i again i know most of you do not watch syria but i i do see rudiger for me he's a good defender to have as in he knows how to get down and dirty he knows how to. He's a, he's a very good at doing a recovery tackle. Um, he's physical, and he's basically he knows. Basically, he's like he's one of those guys where like even if a guy gets past him, he knows how to really get to by basically recovery, which is something that you know is a very good thing to have from defenders where a striker is going down one on one, and this defender can come back and just get in a sliding cycle and stop it because that is. A mixture of speed, the timing of your tackle, and really that kind of determination is what Rudiger has. But again, positional wise, playing a back three, composure on the ball, ability on the ball, I don't, I don't, I don't think he has that. You know, from what I saw of him playing at at Roma, but he's a good defender to have, and yeah, he's definitely a first team footballer. And um, so. But for me, for Chelsea, it's like, is this is this it? <laughs> is this it? So you're saying that you're gonna go into a season with the only play, play you're gonna buy is Rudiger, and that's it. I'm sorry, that's just that doesn't excite anybody. And um, a big name is needed. A big name is needed, needed because the Premier League next season is gonna be crazy. Liverpool, look who the boss Salah, they wanna buy Kaiser. Man City, Bernardo Silva, Daniel Alves is about to come out on his way right now. Arsenal, Lacazette, they're about to lose Alexis Sanchez. But see, guys are re upping. United, they're about to close the deal on Luke Lukaku, trying to tap up James Rodriguez. Guys, I mean, Chelsea, I'm sorry, man. We need to re up. We need to flip and re up, man. Um, what else do we have on the, on the agenda? Uh oh. So, we have um, Costa. Gosh, I, I th so, sorry, I, th I think basically there's just a, a bit of a, a, a light issue here. So it, I may be a, a bit dark, but um, we'll, we'll try whether we can sort out that light. So Costa apparently has agreed terms to head back to Atletico Madrid. That, that is the... Um, that's a rumor around the campfire that he's about to head back to um, Atletico Madrid. So Chelsea needs to push... He, he, he needs to push this because... I don't see a scenario where Costa stays at Chelsea and everything is nice and rosy. Bridges have been bonds. Costa is desperate to go to Atletico. It doesn't seem like if he and Conte can see eye to eye, you can't have a dressing room that is split or a bad kind of atmosphere around the dressing room. So, I think this is all about a fee. Because again, I mean, when we're in 25, I think Atletico, you've got to be realistic. You've got to go, you've got to go at least 30 or 35. I, I think 35 is, a, is the golden number. Costa at Atletico would be good because that that clown Gargamero is complete trash. So, but Costa at Atletico, you've got your boy Saul, you've got um, Koke, you've got Carrasco, you still got, got Griezmann with Costa back in there because Costa, look, he can still do something. And Costa is way better than that clown Gamero and he's better than Blanc Blondie. So, who knows, man? Atletico could do another run in the Champions League with. Yeah, they could because remember he can play in January, and they can still register him when he comes in, and he can still play in January. So yeah, he could have him for the Champions League for a run there. And um, finally, um, Lukaku. Um, 
Actually, no, I'll do nothing right. So, so the thing with Lukaku is that basically, um, he's given an interview, he's completed his medical, so he will be unveiled officially probably Monday or Tuesday. And he said that by how, you know, when United came calling, was, it was tough for him to say no. Um, wanted to work with Mourinho again. I don't know. I truly really don't know about this transfer. I mean, there's a lot of excitement. I was, I was seeing the videos between him and Pogba. Um, he's going to be in court on October because of a party in LA. So everything's all very exciting. But I think Lukaku, I mean, I'm looking at that interview. This is definitely a guy who um, seems ready for the pressure because it's going to be another pressure because you're coming in as a marquee name and I, he will hear you what I've seen what happened to Pogba with all that pressure upon him. 24 years old, are you, can you handle all of that pressure? Are your shoulders broad enough to be able to say, yeah, I can, I can carry the weight and lead the front line um, in the absence of Ibr Ibrahimovic? We have, to, we have to wait, wait, wait and see. Um, but um, these, these are all words. Like, these are all words. Fine. He's got the right psychologist, got the right intent. But these are all words and you need to back them up with, with actions. If you can't back them up with actions, then I don't know what we're talk, talking about. So that's, that's how we roll. Um, but yeah, lastly... Um, Morata and James Rodriguez. What do I put them together? Modric. So Modric said that, given a warning, and again, he, he didn't put them out by name, but you knew he was talking about James and Morata, that if you leave Real Madrid, there's, it's only downhill. That's the, the, the only way is downhill after you leave Real Madrid. And it's not what look at Modric is, is saying by that, is that if like there is no bigger club than Real Madrid, you can't go higher than Real Madrid. Madrid, but I give the example of Robert and, 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 and Snyder. Fair enough, Inter Milan and um, Baninic may not have the kind of accolades and pre accolades because Bayern have prestige, the kind of accolades that Real Madrid have. But I don't think Snyder's going to be disappointed with winning a treble with Inter Milan. I don't think Robin is going to be disappointed with winning a treble with um, Bayern Munich. I think Robin will look back at his bad unique career and say, you know what? That was, that was a damn good career. <laughs> you know? So, and these are both players who went to Real Madrid, didn't make it there, flopped, came back, but still had excellent careers in, in different clubs. So, for, for Morata and Hamas, 100% they should leave Real Madrid. You know? Like, sitting on a bench anywhere, I don't care what the club is, sitting on a bench, any club, that's, that, 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 that's a, a bad look. And, James and Morata are too good to be bench players. Okay, they're too, you're too good to be bench players. So 1,000% they could have pushed push for a move. 100% they have to push for a move because being around Madrid on the bench, you are pissing away your 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 career. You're totally and utterly pissing away your, your your career. So yeah, guys, that is that's your football news supplements for the day. Remember, I will be trying to do it doing this daily. I just had some internet issues, that's why I wasn't doing it like that, but. Daily, they will always do like a football news transfer roundup of all of the biggest stories and stories that I like throughout the day. So watch for the other ones to come very soon. Peace, stay true, stay black.